Had the government not spent all that money on commercials showing us all how to wash our hands, I would have never known how. And let us never forget how loving it was to force employees to get vaccinated. No one should ever be responsible for mitigating risk and safety for themselves, ever. I mean, what else is the government here for? The Godly Troublemaker Podcast. As we celebrate the three-year anniversary of the two-week shutdown to slow the curve that never happened but is still coming, I thought this would be a good time to reflect upon one of the more delightful and less controversial aspects of this glorious wet blanket of care that Big Brother wrapped around our face as to help us breathe better during this pandemic that is apparently still considered a state of emergency by our government. If I was a more humble person, I might say, I told you so. What one thing could I possibly have in mind, you might ask? There was such an outpouring of love during this time, such a manifestation of love and care for one's neighbor, it was almost as if the eschaton was being ushered in. What could I possibly be thinking of? There were so many exhibitions of grace and love. It even became a mantra, love your neighbor and do this or hinder your witness. Could I be speaking of the quarantine orders and the accompanying slogan, stay home and stay safe, and to stay home and save lives? What about the shutting down of schools and businesses, certainly not allowing citizens to be able to work and provide for their families was an act of love, and the charitable relief of giving a $600 check to each citizen that they already paid for through their taxes was awesome. Thanks, Uncle Sam. What about governors like Gretchen Whitler telling residents of her state to narc on, I mean confront, okay, I mean educate their neighbors on the importance of social distancing? While we're on the topic of social distancing, let's not forget how important it was to stand six feet apart wherever we went, especially outside and by ourselves, because you can never be too safe. And what about all those protective plexi walls in the supermarket, COVID's certainly not getting around those. We also can't forget how important it was to love our neighbor by not getting cancer screenings. And we all needed to make sure that women had the access to important health care like abortions on demand. I am also so thankful the government, along with medical professionals, did the hard work of determining which vegetable seeds carried COVID and which ones did not. Had it not been for them, I would have never known that buying tomato seeds could spread the virus, but buying pot was okay. Without the hours of research and labor, I would have never known that I could give COVID to myself as I walked alone on the beach. And let's not forget how safe it was to have some 18-year-old kid deliver all my food to my house after touching all of it, instead of having me touch it at the store. Thanks, science. I would have never known how dangerous singing at church was or how I put my neighbor at great risk of dying a violent and horrible death just by going to church. Let's not forget the science that clearly showed us that it was okay to be in a massive public riot, peaceful protest, as long as we were in a densely populated area and screaming obscenities. I am also so thankful I was prevented from bringing my kids to the playground, Because before COVID, I had no idea that my kids could catch a cold from touching something 500 other kids had touched. Had the government not spent all that money on commercials showing us all how to wash our hands, I would have never known how. And let us never forget how loving it was to force employees to get vaccinated. No one should ever be responsible for mitigating risk and safety for themselves, ever. I mean, what else is the government here for? Thank you, big brother. Thank you. No, no, no. All of those things were wonderful in themselves. But the one thing I am thinking of is that glorious wet blanket of love itself that was literally wrapped around our faces. That's right, brethren and sistren. I'm talking about masks. Face diapers and the lost art of learning stuff. On February 21st, the year of our Lord, 2023, Lightning struck in the most unexpected of places in an opinion piece titled The Mask Mandates Did Nothing. Will Any Lessons Be Learned? Written by Brett Stevens and published by the New York Times. That's right, the New York Times. The article begins with the following words, quote, The most rigorous and comprehensive analysis of scientific studies conducted on the efficacy of masks for reducing the spread of respiratory illnesses 
including COVID-19, was published late last month. Its conclusions, said Tom Jefferson, the Oxford epidemiologist, who is its lead author, were unambiguous. There is just no evidence that they, masks, make any difference. Full stop. End quote. He goes on to say that even N95 masks make no difference either. He even had the audacity to say that population-level mask mandates did nothing, and imposing them on the population actually caused considerable psychological, physical, pedagogical, and political harm. Do any of these findings count as the science that we were told over and over again to trust? Uh, Nope, not at all. That would force people to come to terms with how easily manipulated they were. It is always much harder to turn around when you realize that you are driving in the wrong direction than it is to just drive faster. Case in point, Rochelle Walensky, the director of Centers for Disease and Prevention, assured everyone this month that her agency's guidance regarding masking in schools wouldn't change because she calls into question the validity of the Cochrane study. Trust the science, of course, but not when it's done by actual scientists. How should we respond to Stephen's article, one might ask? Perhaps with a freaking duh, or maybe with a welcome to the party, but John McLean style in Nakatomi Plaza. It took three years and how much money to come to the same conclusion that every single doctor and nursing student knew before 2020. Not to mention all of the people that were mocked, maligned, marginalized, not to mention harassed because they didn't think it was necessary or effective to wear a mask. And if you didn't have a mask on, you were treated like you had the bubonic plague, regardless of whether or not you were sick in any way. If you're tempted to say, that's an exaggeration, I would say, au contraire, my friend. Four months into the COVID crazy, we released a video entitled, Masks. In this video, I said that masks had become a stupid virtue signal and bullying tactic by people who have never really contributed anything of value to the entirety of humanity. But now they can let everyone know that they are saving the planet one outing at a time. And I referred to people wearing masks on the beach and in their car as being on a whole nother level of retardery that we should not participate in. As a result of me saying that the emperor needs to cover up his junk, I received multiple death threats, was told how unloving I was. I was told I needed to be removed from ministry, and I was told that my children should be taken away from me. And that was just from the Christians. So upon reading such an article, I don't know that thankful is the right expression. And whatever my response to this article may be, I think it's safe to say that it's less than exuberant. But back to the title, question of the article. The mask mandates did nothing. Will any lessons be learned? In some respect, we can answer that question with a resounding no. Nothing new was learned as a result of all of this. This was all common knowledge before COVID that the science had already proved, and nobody questioned it. All of the studies had already been done on masks long before 2020. There is no new data available that wasn't beforehand. What we did learn, however, is that trust the science comes with the same authority as a papal bull for secular idolaters, as does a real papal bull for Roman Catholic idolaters. That is, trust the science comes to the public as infallible, undeniable, unquestionable, and authoritative, regardless of whether or not it defies all of the science done beforehand, like a pope contradicting popes that have gone before them, but all being equally infallible. How does that work? Don't know. Shut up and trust the science, you unloving prick, and you're a racist, bigoted homophobe. Perhaps nothing was actually learned, but a whole lot was certainly affirmed. Did anyone question whether or not Tim Keller was a commie before COVID? Not really, but now we know. Did anyone really question whether or not Russell Moore was an effeminate soft herd of a man before COVID? Well, not really, but now we know. Did anyone really question whether or not the Gospel Coalition had turned into a liberal cesspool that desperately wants to be liked by the cool kids? Not really, but now we know. Did anyone question whether or not two-kingdom theology was really paganism shoved right up the tailpipe? Not really, but now we know. Did anyone really question whether or not the separatistic pietism that's prevalent in much of the church would ever stand up to Leviathan? Not really 
but now we know. Did anyone really question whether or not these same emotionally manipulative men would turn on their own congregations and manipulate them by telling them what the loving thing to do was and what was winsome and reasonable? No, not really, but now we know. We should also not be surprised that the loving thing to do and winsome thing and reasonable thing to do was always the thing that never cost them anything. Many of us suspected a lot of things, but to see it all play out in real time and in real space was still disheartening to the extreme. It's one thing to suspect that many in the church would have no problem selling out their brother or sister in Christ if it cost them anything at all, even something as small as the approval of the unregenerate is disheartening. It's one thing to suspect that many in the church would have no problem sending their brother or sister to a concentration camp. Sorry re-education training. But to see it happening is disheartening. It's one thing to suspect that many in the church would bow down and do whatever the government told them to do, and then quickly turn around and say that the government was not telling them how to preach the gospel yet, so it was okay, because as soon as they do that, then they'll grow a pair. But to see that actually happening is disheartening. The fact of the matter is, many in church leadership thought it was a good idea to segregate their bodies, separate their churches, saying who could worship and when. After shutting down their churches for months, many still thought assigned seating was a good idea. Many had mandatory mask mandates for attendance, and many told their congregations that the loving thing to do was to get vaccinated, and they knew nothing about this vaccine. In Grand Rapids, Michigan, multiple pastors even formed a COVID task force encouraging their members and communities to get the vaccine, particularly communities of color, because nothing says loving your neighbor, and I'm not a racist, like experimenting on people of color, none of which has been publicly repented of. Not only that, they openly demonized those who questioned the efficacy of what they said and did. And they didn't just ridicule those who disagreed with them. They said that those who questioned them were actively disobeying God by not loving their neighbor. But of course, they very much wanted you to know that they were the humble ones in the room, just trying to make the world a better place and all. Conclusion. Will any lessons be learned from all of this? In good Yogi Berra fashion, let me just say that we learned what we already knew. That is, that stupid theology makes stupid people. Weak theology makes weak people. Trite theology makes trite people. Shallow theology makes shallow people. In short, we become like what we worship. And we should all take a good hard look in the mirror because what we've become ain't pretty. However, there is a silver lining in all of this. God shakes things up to strengthen what remains. The actual church of Jesus Christ didn't weaken as a result of COVID. It actually became much stronger by removing all of the dead branches. It forced many to solidify convictions they already had, but they just didn't know it yet. It made the church realize what happens when we worship and just how cataclysmically important that is. It gave the church an abject lesson that doctrine matters and has real-time consequences. As Machen said, indifference towards doctrine makes no heroes of the faith. COVID was the ultimate beta test. Now we know who the heroes are, and perhaps the battle for Middle Earth has just begun.